We continue our series, Following Jesus, and this morning we're looking at taking a step of faith as Jesus calls the disciples. We are in Mark chapter 1, verses 16 through 20. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts and minds this morning. Well, I don't know if you're a sports fan this morning, uh, but in addition to Purdue playing, which is still number one or back to number one, uh, a great game, I'm sure that will be. There's also two conference playoff games in the NFL. So a lot of excitement. None of them are my teams, but I try to pick some and some characters of interest. But, but one for sure is a character of interest, and, and that's the Brock Purdy. And um, uh, he's a great story because he was picked last in the NFL. <laughs> What a great reputation to have. Number 200. Wow. And, and I know, I've i never come close to having my name called in the NFL, so it's great. But he was waiting with such anticipation uh, to have his name called. And, uh, and then finally it was called for the San Francisco 49ers. Isn't that amazing? And uh, he's like the, was like the fourth string quarterback. And uh, he was nicknamed Mr. Irrelevant. <laughs> How would you like that name? Not your name, Brock Purdy, but Mr. Irrelevant irrelevant right man have you ever felt that way and then one by one the the quarterbacks got injured or or knocked off right and and then all of a sudden he's in there right and uh he's getting by in fact he's doing better he's got this cool collected calm on the field and is able to somehow make plays and uh, the thing i like about him best is that he says every time i step on the field i want to bring glory to god i mean what a what a great sort of mantra, right, in life. What a great goal. And as a matter of fact, it's pretty funny, but no one who's ever been picked last in the NFL has ever made a forward pass that was completed (laughs) until Brock Purdy. Well, we'll see how he does today. He's been doing fantastic. I mean, certainly beat all all the expectations altogether. And the question I think for us, thinking about, you know, some uh, futile play like that and, and, uh, all the great things that are happening. A lot of great players out there. A lot of folks with great character, great faith too. But I think in our own life, sometimes we feel like we're irrelevant, right? That we're sort of Mr. Irrelevant or Mrs. Irrelevant or whatever it is. But we all like to hear our name called. And I think for all of us that God has a game plan for all of our lives. God has a plan and purpose. And I think as we look at this story today, I like to invite us into the story and see God calling. And I think if we look at this, there are different sort of versions of the calling of the disciples. Uh, there's Matthew, Mark, and Luke, very much similar. And then John gives us a picture. And some people say, well, you know, those are kind of different, right? But other writers look at it and say, no, you know what? There's actually more than one calling of the disciples. And I think there's a great teaching in that is that's my uh, reading of this. And so I'd like to look at it. In fact, I think there's sort of three separate calls to the disciples and three separate calls to us. And those calls are to believe, to follow, and to serve. To believe, to follow, and to serve. And that none of us is Mr. or Mrs. Irrelevant. So I invite you back into the story this morning. And so before Mark, who Mark, as you know, is the action-packed gospel. I mean, everywhere it's immediately, over 40 times, immediately, and right away. And then along the road, there's all these kinds of action-packed kind of things. Sort of the sports caster of the gospels, right? And uh, and no story about the birth of Jesus. We're just sort of parachuted in there like Mission Impossible. There's John the Baptist in the wilderness. He baptizes Jesus. Jesus goes to the Mount of Temptation. Jesus calls disciples. And if you like Cliff Notes, man, marks your gospel. If you like action, marks your gospel. They all have something unique and beautiful. And if you look at this moment this morning, we recall that, that Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. And that a, was a powerful moment. And John was moved by Jesus and said, I'm not worthy to baptize you. But Jesus said, I need to be faithful to the Father's call. And John the Baptist baptized Jesus and then uh, heard the voice from heaven. Behold, my son, my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased, and the Holy Spirit descended. And we looked at that beautiful moment last week and thought about our own calling and the Holy Spirit in our lives and being servant leaders. 
But John's gospel gives us a moment right after that that Mark doesn't give. And that moment is this, is that, that Jesus was pointed to by John the Baptist. And the disciples that were following John the Baptist, John the Baptist told to follow Jesus. And you recall there's Andrew, Peter, James, John. And, uh, and in that moment, they believe. There's a, John gives us a whole beautiful picture. John uses the camera lens. It really gives us an in-depth picture of the calling of the disciples. Along the way, he does that to all the major characters. And we see a really heartfelt moment. And, and, they, and they believe. They believe that they hear their name called. And, 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 of course, Mark tells us, you know, that they're all called individually. But I think that's so important because in that moment, there's a great phrase that I love, come and see. You know, come and experience. Come and, come and believe. And I think for all of us, we, we need to have that moment in life. And we need to hear our name whispered by the Lord. And, you know, you don't always hear a voice from heaven, right? But sometimes in your heart, in your heart of heart, you hear God call your name. You hear God whisper to you. And I wonder, in your life, have you taken a moment where you hear God call your name, whisper your name, and that you were able to, to believe? Now, believe isn't a one and done. You, you know that. The life of faith, the life of discipleship is a growing experience is a growing journey along the way. You never quite know what's going to happen, but you know if you follow God, that God has a plan and purpose for your life, and God is going to see you through, but you've got to believe. You've got to take that moment in life, and you've got to believe that God is there for you, and God does it in so many extraordinary ways. Simon, who became Peter, Andrew, and James, and John, the fishermen, and all these beautiful moments, and it's interesting because, again, Mark summarizes this after Jesus' baptism, what happens? Immediately, Jesus goes to the Mount of Temptation, right? And if you, I had the privilege of being in the Holy Land, as I said before, and it was there at the River Jordan. And from the River Jordan, you can see what's called the Mount of Temptation. It is this dark, foreboding mountain. Even in the, in the Near Eastern sun, this is like dark and foreboding. It's desert, man. And that's known as the Mount of Temptation. Nothing up there, uh, you know, bad place to be. And Jesus is called by the Spirit to the Mount of Temptation. And if John's account is correct, which I think it is, it, it means that Jesus was called to the Mount of Temptation. We don't know if Jesus invited the disciples to go to the Mount of Temptation, but we know this. None of them went. <laughs> count, me, count me on that list. Like, Mount of Temptation, well, I'm going to believe, but I think I'm going to take a break for the Mount of Temptation. And Jesus went there and experienced that. So there's a moment, I think, where we believe and sometimes where we sort of stutter step. We're going like, oh, wait a second, I'm not going to follow that, right? But it's interesting because when we put all the Gospels together, what we see is after Jesus was on the Mount of Temptation, that Jesus went towards Capernaum, which is where Matthew, Mark, and Luke all kind of focus in on the camera lens there. Jesus, who spent much of his time growing up in Capernaum, Peter, who lived in Capernaum, his house is still there. It's probably to see his house. But Jesus is walking along the shore, and he's looking for them, right? And he's going to call them again, which means probably the disciples believed Jesus, but they didn't really feel they had a mission, right? Not going to do the amount of temptation. This calling's not for me. And sometimes we're in that phase in life, right? We believe, but we don't really ready to do the next step, which is to follow. But Jesus goes looking for the disciples. He knows where they will be because they're fishermen. Along that coast, that's very rich, it's south of Capernaum, along the Sea of Galilee. And so Jesus specifically goes looking for them, and then Jesus calls them. Individually, again, we see these moments where it's, it's Andrew, and it's Peter, right? It's James, and it's John, and he goes on, and we give other, Nathaniel and Philip, and some of the other Gospels really lets us know, and John lets us know. But it, it, it's beautiful because Jesus goes looking for them and not only calls them to believe, but also calls them to follow him, to follow them. And what does Mark tell us that like Mark always does? Immediately, they left their nets and followed Jesus. Immediately, they left their nets and followed Jesus at that moment, that kind of second calling moment. And I don't know about you, but are there some things that you hang on to in life that you want to, like your nets? So they were fishermen. so you know, the nets, the things that you do. And God is pulling you into a new chapter of life, wants to stretch you, help you to grow in your faith. But you and I, me for sure, sometimes want to hang on to our nets. But God would follow, call us to follow him and to let go of the nets. So now, what is it that maybe that you're hanging on to that's 
preventing you to really fully following God the way that God would like you to sort of deepen into your prayer life. Where is God calling you to grow in your faith and to follow him? Because it's all about growing. Now, if you're like me and you follow anyone else like a roadmap, I don't know, we don't use roadmaps anymore, but you do do the GPS, GPS, right? Anyone, I love the GPS because if you take a wrong turn, it reroutes and gets you back. I like that. If there's traffic, you know there's traffic and there's alternate routes and everything's kind of laid out and planned. And for some of you know, I'm supposed to drive to Maxwell Air Force Base, get there late tonight and have everything kind of laid out. And uh, you know, I just, it's all kind of mapped out. And, and then on the way to church this morning, my Jeep starts making this noise. And um, I, Sven goes, what's that? And I'm like, I don't know, what's that? And, and then we're pulling into our usual stop, which is Dunkin' Donuts, <laughs> to coffee up before. <laughs> and smoke is coming out of the front of the Jeep. And I'm like, oh, this is not right. <laughs> Turned it off, got out, <laughs> lifted the hood, smoke coming out of the front of the Jeep. And I'm like, oh my God. And this horrible nose turned it off and I said, well, there's no fire. I think we can make it home and get Savannah's Jeep. And, uh, and so we did, right? And so <laughs> all my plans that I had, you know, so now it's a rental vehicle. But I kept saying, you know, well, at least I wasn't halfway to Montgomery, Alabama, right, when this happened. At least I wasn't, you know, we could make it back. We weren't sure we could make it back. We tried. So here, I made it here. <laughs> Unfortunately, I couldn't stop. At Dunkin' Donuts, you have time. So if I feel like, if it sounds like I'm one coffee short, I am. But I'm here. I'm here, right? What an exciting sort of, sort of adventure uh, this is. And uh, I have no idea what's wrong with my Jeep, but I, I, I parked it far away from the house that if it catches on fire, that, you know, the house won. So anyway, just praying that that's okay. But uh, it's not going with me on the trip to Maxwell Air Force Base. But there's rental vehicles. But you sort of, you know, <laughs> know that... You sort of look at it and say, you know, here's the good in that, right? Didn't happen halfway to Tennessee <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it happened, uh, it didn't happen halfway to church where Sven and I would be, you know, uh, using a cell phone to call one of you to come and get us. We were able to make it back home. And, and so we're here. And so it's adventure. And uh, God's word promises that all things work together for the good of those who love God who are called according to his purposes. Well, sometimes we don't like what happens. That's minor. Oh, my gosh. Some of the things that happen in life, you know, sickness, illnesses, loss of loved ones, it's, it's nothing if your vehicle breaks down. And it's exciting because, you know, so I'm not sure where I'm getting that other vehicle today. To, but there's rental places open today. But I know God will provide a way. But for you and me, man, we, I mean, for me, I like it planned out. And I take a little adventure, but I want to know that I can get back on the trail. But God sometimes takes us off the trail because God has bigger and better things that are happening in our life. And we need to be open to the adventure. Follow God, trust God. I'm not saying don't plan. Go ahead and plan, plan. That's a good thing, right? What's the next step of faith? But when something happens, don't let it blow the whole world up for you, okay? Just believe that God is there, just like God was for Peter and James and John along the way, right? And for, for Peter, right? I mean, Peter's name was actually Simon at first, which means Sandy. And Jesus said, after this confession of faith, beautiful moment, he said, flesh and blood has not revealed to that to you, but my spirit, the spirit of the Father. And upon this rock, I will build my church. And his name was changed to Peter, which means rock. So from sandy, sort of shifting soil to the rock, you know, if you're Rocky, if you're a Sylvester Stallone fan, or... The Rock, if you're a Dwayne Johnson kind of fan, but you know, uh, The Rock, he's a tough guy. Turns out he still had some growing to do in his own life of faith, but where are you on your journey of following the Lord? One of the other players that I like that's playing today is Patrick Mahomes. Great guy. My daughter will tell you, he's cute, Dad. You know, that's how she picks him, you know. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, he's just been a remarkable player in the NFL. And it was a remarkable player all of his life, a lot of, a lot of promise. But one of the things he said when he was just in, in middle school, uh, his father wasn't part of his family. He said, Mom, I want to be a man in church. 
I want to be a man in church. And his faith is very strong. No one's perfect, okay, right? But, you know, he always tweets to the glory of God. He always gives glory to God. And, and, um, and I know you probably don't pick your NFL teams by their faith necessarily, but I always look at some players and think, man, he's a great young man. Patrick Mahomes, he's been the MVP in the NFL, led KC Super Bowl, and he's just, he's got a lot of promise. But the biggest thing is up or down, win or lose, gives the glory to God. I mean, that ought to be number one in our life. Has a vision that there's a bigger plan and purpose that God is at work. How are you at hearing and believing as God calls your name and Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior? And how are you at leaving the nets behind and following the Lord? What do you need to let go of this morning so that you can grow in the next step of your journey, of your adventure in discipleship? For Jesus, who went looking again for all these disciples who believed, but went back to work, to what they were doing before. We know Jesus was just about to heal Peter's mother-in-law. If you look at the next couple chapters in Mark, you'll see Jesus here, Peter's mother-in-law. She lived with Peter at the house, been to that house. Really amazing. It's you know, right there along the sea. Look out over where they were fishing. Jesus knew where to find him. Jesus knows where to find you. <laughs> when you go kind of wherever you're going, away from the call of God for the next step, Oh, yeah, Jesus will come looking for you. He'll call your name and give you a chance to follow him wherever you are. So believe and to follow and then finally to serve, to serve. Jesus calls them to do what? To be fishers of men, more inclusive, to be fishers of men and women, to fishers of people of all ages, genders, races, languages, cultures, everything. They had a job to do, to serve God and to serve others, right? Love God comes first and then Love and serve neighbor. So what is God calling you to, to a greater mission to serve him? Immediately, they left their nets, followed Jesus. They were perfect disciples at that moment. They were growing, just like you and I are growing. But God had a, a plan and purpose for them to serve others. And for all of us, not just pastors, not just missionaries or whatever, God has a mission of service for each and every one of us, each and every day. God needs Christian teachers, God needs Christian sports players, Christian coaches, Christian plumbers, everything, everything out there, farmers, factory workers, all of it. Because when we are on the job, we have a chance to, to reach people, right? In a new and dynamic way. This is kind of like the black room talk, kind of the worship moment to energize, and then we're out into the world to serve God, to share the good news of others. Every day, you and I come in contact with people that are, that are hurting that are upset or their lives are broken and they need someone to speak a, a word of good news, a word of hope and healing. And through Jesus Christ, we can, we can do that. We can do all kinds of things. And, uh, and God is pulling us forward. In this moment, in the life of Joshua, we read the scripture from Joshua, I love that. In the Joshua moment, of course, Moses had his calling. He was at first an Israelite, then raised in the house of Pharaoh, Killed an Egyptian and then had to flee from the desert, was in the desert for 40 years. Then God called him from a burning bush. That's his name. And then gave him a mission, which was to go and to lead the people from slavery to freedom, from bondage to promised land. And uh, Moses said, not me. Can't do it. Stuttered, not good at speech, and I'm not going to face that Pharaoh guy. I left that before. But eventually God pulls him along because God had been working in Moses' life and God leads Moses through a series of incredible miracles to lead the people from bondage to freedom and then, of course, into the wilderness. And in this moment that we read in the first chapter of Joshua, Moses, after 40 years, has been mentoring his next successor, his successor, which is Joshua, a young man, and now is older and middle of life, and Moses is mentoring him along the way. And God speaks words to Moses, that Moses in turn speaks to Joshua's words of comfort. Then Joshua speaks those same words to the people. And what are those beautiful words? Joshua 1, nine. I see this a lot and I, I love it. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Isn't that powerful? I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. And why does God say, do not be frightened or discouraged? Because he's probably frightened and discouraged, right? Because Joshua is about to take the lead. Moses is gone now. And Joshua has to lead the people across the Jordan River in flood season. 
and they have to face armies on the other side, right? And so he's, like, he's been trained for this moment, but it's kind of, you know, a moment of trepidation and fear too. And so don't be frightened, don't be discouraged, don't be dismayed, be strong and courageous. And I think a lot of times in our lives we have to do that. And then God tells Joshua that he's got to do what? He's got to take a step of faith and step into the Jordan River, and only when he steps into the Jordan River will the waters part and the people can cross. And a lot of times, friends, in our own life, when we're serving, we have to not only believe and we have to follow, but when we're going to serve, we have to take another step of faith, which is to do something that really pulls us into a greater avenue of life, just like Joshua did. And when Joshua did that, the waters parted and the people were able to cross over the Jordan River, just like the people had crossed over the Red Sea with Moses. And many times we are mentored by older men and women in Christ, but we have to have a moment where we step forward in faith and we not only follow, but we serve God in, in new and in bolder ways. And Joshua knew that. And Joshua spoke to the people and shared that with the people. So where is God whispering you to take a step of faith? Not just to believe and not just to follow, but also to serve. So back to Mr. Irrelevant. <laughs> Brock Purdy is going to play today, right? And he's really cool and calm. He's the coolest, calmest uh, rookie ever seen, but this is what his coach says about him. But I think beyond that, he just keeps saying, every time I step on the field, I want to give God glory. I don't know whether the 49ers are win or lose. It's not just one player today, but for sure, I mean, this rookie is on the stage and has played way above expectations and has done a great job. But no one calls him Mr. Irrelevant anymore, right? Now, he's only one player. You and I are only one person. But I can tell you that none of us are Mr. and Mrs. Irrelevant when we play with God, when we follow God's plan and purpose. And you might think, well, my day is way down the road. But your day might be today. Your day might be tomorrow in life, right? And so where do we need to step up? All the practice, all the training we've been doing, just like that can become relevant. Some of the pain and heartbreak that we've been going through in life can all of a sudden become a ministry moment in life. And all of us will fail and fall short at some point in life. I'm going to close with this thought, which is that Peter, who is first, Simon, right? Shifting sand becomes Peter the rock. And... It doesn't mean that Peter didn't fail. In fact, you and I know that Peter fell in a big way. Even when Jesus had warned him, when there was the threat of the cross and he was around the fire, and people asked him as Jesus was on trial and about to be crucified, if he was a follower of Christ, he denied Christ not once, but three times. And you and I might have denied Christ in different ways, whether it was failing to hear our call or failing to take a step of faith or maybe just under pressure, just like, no, nope, I'm not a person of faith, just like Peter did. And he had to feel like he had lost everything. And after the joy of the resurrection, which Peter shared in that moment, Peter does what a lot of us would do. And John records it. He goes back to the thing that he knew and he had to do and had a certain love in his heart for which was fishing because he was a fisherman and his friends went with him because that's what friends do you know they can't talk about him they go with you make sure that you got somebody there and that's what a friend is and so they're out they hadn't caught anything all night but they fished all night maybe that was a talking moment maybe it was just a lot of silence but you know when you got your friends it's all different and peter had to be thinking about his failure and then at the sunrise they saw a figure on the sandy beach too sunny, too early to recognize who it is. But then Jesus calls to him, said, friends, have you caught anything? Friends there, the Greek word is actually kind of dudes is what it is. It's a real slang word in Greek, but you can't see it in that English. But it's like, you know, this slang kind of bro, dude, whatever your thing is with that. And uh, they recognize it's Jesus. Jesus told them to throw their nets on the other side to do something different than they had done. These are fishermen. Jesus is a carpenter. And they do it, and they have this huge catch of fish, and they recognize it's the Lord, and Peter is the first to kind of jump in, swim to shore. Jesus makes him breakfast in that morning, fish and bread, if that's your thing. But they're fishermen. Then after all that's done, Jesus looks at Peter, 
And everybody had to be thinking the same thing. What about this moment? Jesus said he was a rock. He blew it not once, but three times when the pressure was on. And Jesus looks at Peter and says, Peter, do you love me more than these? You know, the fish, the fishing thing. And Peter says, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus said, then feed my sheep. And then Jesus looked at Peter again and said, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, you know I love you, Lord. And Jesus said, then feed my little lambs. And then a third time, Jesus looked at Peter and said, Peter, do you love me more than these? He said, you know I love you, Lord. And Jesus said, then feed my sheep. As if for every time that Peter failed and fallen short, Jesus was not only affirming Peter's love for Jesus, but also his call to ministry. Jesus lifts Peter up, and Peter did fulfill his mission in life. And I think in the same way, you and I, when we fail and falter, as we sometimes, maybe our belief crumbles a little under pressure, or we follow, we want to hang on to our nets or go back to our nets, or we fail in the service that God has called us to, that Jesus comes looking for us again to lift us up, to let, him, let us know that he loves us and affirm that we love Jesus and reinstitutes our ministry calls us forward even to a greater ministry. I believe that Peter was stronger because of his failure and reinstitution by Jesus. I believe that Peter became even greater and that Peter had a heart for people who had also fallen and had broken lives and heartache and heartbreak along the way of life. So friends, wherever you are in your call this morning, know that Jesus comes looking for you and calls your name. No one is Mr. or Mrs. Irrelevant. God has a call, a mission, and ministry for each and every one of us. God calls us by name to believe that Jesus is Lord, the one that heals our heartbreak, the one who forgives our sins and shortcomings. Jesus calls us to follow him. It's not always easy because sometimes we've got to let go of the nets and things happen that we didn't plan, but God has a plan, a purpose, and the power to see us through. And then Jesus calls us to serve, to serve and to grow in an area of service. And each of our areas of service are unique and different based on our gifts and talents. But God has a plan and purpose for you. So I challenge all of us to do exactly that. I'm gonna close with a, a poem that I love by Sir Francis Drake, the great explorer. And he wrote this as he was sailing for the west coast of South America, uh, back when there was no GPS, no motorized uh, boats of any kind. But he, he has this imagery of faith, and I want you to have that as we think about our own life of faith and a journey of faith as we not only hear our name uh, to believe and to follow and to serve, but we're ever growing. And it says this, it's called Disturb Us, Lord. Disturb us, Lord, when we are too pleased with ourselves, when our dreams have come true because we have dreamed too little, when we arrive safely because we sailed too close to the shore. Disturb us, Lord, when with the abundance of things we possess, we've lost our thirst for the waters of life. Having fallen in love with life, we've ceased to dream of eternity. And in our efforts to build a new earth, we have allowed our vision of the new heaven to dim. Disturb us, Lord, to dare more boldly, to venture on wilder seas where storms will show your mastery. Where losing sight of land, we shall find the stars. We ask you to push back the horizons of our hopes and to push back the future in strength, courage, hope, and love. This we ask in the name of our captain, who is Jesus Christ. Amen. We join me in prayer. Lord, we thank you for the call to discipleship of the first disciples, as well as to each and every one of us. Help us to believe, to believe in you, that our relationship with you is the most important thing in all of life. And help us to follow you into the adventure of faith, to take a step of faith, knowing that even though we don't always have a map in front of us, that we trust you, that you have a plan and purpose for our lives and the power to see us through. And help us to serve you, to serve others as we serve you, using our gifts and talents for your glory. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.